Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at a brand new game which is coming out today. Uh, that game is John Schaefer's At The Gates. This is a game that's been in development since at least 2013 and was the subject of a somewhat controversial Kickstarter campaign, uh, mainly due to the fact that the game took so long between the Kickstarter and when it actually came out. There were stops, there were starts, there was a lot of sort of uncertainty around, you know, whether uh, this was ever going to come out and whether people's money was, was kind of gone. Uh, but there was also a lot of sort of unreported information about John Schaefer and some of the challenges and, and tribulations that he was going through in his own personal life uh, that contributed to some of those delays. Uh, John Schaefer, for those of you who are unaware, uh, was the lead designer on Civilization V, uh, and he was also involved, I believe, in some of the DLC for Civilization IV, so a pretty good pedigree as far as a game designer is concerned. After uh, Civilization V, he broke out on his own, started his own company, Confer Games, and started work on At The Gates with the aforementioned Kickstarter. At the Gates is an interesting game concept. It's a 4X strategy game for sure, and there's definitely some superficial uh, resemblance to Civilization, but the concept behind the game is very different. In At the Gates, you are the leader of a barbarian tribe during the late Roman Empire. The game starts in 400 AD, and you play through on procedurally generated maps uh, the, as the leader of a barbarian tribe as you attempt to increase your influence, your power, your kingdom, uh, and you potentially migrate across the map as the barbarians in this time do. Uh, you do have the ability to build up relations with Rome and potentially even sack Rome itself and become the militant magistrum of Rome. Uh, it's a very interesting game that puts you in the shoes of the Barbarians rather than the Romans uh, and plays through a, a kind of a, a 4X type of a game. With that being said, why don't we go ahead and jump in here. So if we go ahead and we click New Game, uh, you'll, say in a you'll play in a procedurally generated map that has a geography and climate similar to Europe, where obviously the Roman Empire existed. As you can see here, as a first start through for the game, there are, what are there here, 10 different barbarian kingdoms that you can play as. Um, there is only one that you can play as the start, though. So you can see here there's the Huns, the Vandals, the Alemanni, the Picts, the Lombards, the Franks, the Slavs, the Saxons, and the Avars, all historical barbarian tribes. And then there are the Goths. The Goths are the tribe that you can play at the start. Uh, their unique ability is they start with a little bit more food, so five more food than the stock, and 60 more treasure. Uh, the default is 10 and 40, 14. Um, the Goths are the only kingdom you can play when you start. The other factions, the Huns, Vandals, Alemanni, all of these other tribes unlock once you've either signed an alliance with one of those tribes in another one of your games, or once you've actually conquered that faction. So essentially you either need to conquer or befriend a tribe to be able to play them in a future game. So it's an interesting mechanic that's built around you know, how you unlock uh, playable countries. If we go ahead and we click on the Goths, we'll go ahead and start a brand new game. I will say I really like the landing screen here of, uh, of Rome uh, being sacked. I believe you can see flames on the horizon there uh, of the Roman Empire. Uh, I presume it's when the Goths sacked Rome. Um, okay, so you can see here it's early April of 400 AD, and this is your game map. This is where you start uh, the game on. Now you can zoom in or out of the, the, the grand strategy map by a mouse wheel. You can also click this globe icon up here to switch between the sort of grand strategic view uh, or the simplified uh, tactical view. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's some information up here on the top left that I'll talk about first that's important to understanding the game's progress. We're going to ignore this clan icon up here first. So what we're going to look at is the star here. It basically represents your score. Uh, you, get, uh, you lose score if your tribe is starving. You gain score uh, every time you add a new clan. You gain score every time you build a new structure or capture or pillage a structure. You gain score if you kill Roman clans, sink ships. Uh, or uh, kill non-Roman clans. You gain uh, additional score for destroying bandit camps or destroying uh, slave or bandit camps. So that's how you score up. Um, you also have some information here about treasure. This is how much money you have. You can gain money through mining rare minerals. You can gain money through pillage of other uh, facilities. You can gain money through essentially just having your city produce it um, uh, at a sacrifice of not doing anything else with your city that turn. Uh, or you can gain it through selling goods with the caravans which come around your uh, kingdom every so often. 
The next one down here is food. This is, uh, according to the game, the most important resource in the game. Uh, if you run out of food, you starve. Uh, the number here is represented with how many turns left of food you have. And the red number represents how many turns you're losing in a given turn. So right now we're losing one turn worth of food every turn. Okay. Um, however, uh, you can actually gain more food than you than you. Um, use and that's going to be important because seasons play a role in this game and you can you know gain a lot of food and resources during the spring months but when it comes time for winter uh, and you're no longer able to harvest that wheat or other things like that then you'll start consuming food and so you need to make sure you've got a big enough stockpile to last you through the winter. In addition, down here are some additional resources, so these will depend on what resources you have gathered, but in our case it looks like we're starting with two alcohol and three horses. Horses can be used the same way as other animals, turned into war horses by horse trainer, um, or they can also be turned into food if your tribe is starving. And alcohol can be used, uh, it's a resource that's produced from barley, from wheat, uh, it can be traded with a caravan, it can also be used to increase the mood of your clans. So with that being said, what about the clans? Well, there's these three icons over here, but we can also click on clans up here to get an overview of the different clans in our tribe. So the clans of the Goths. This is We are the Gothic Kingdom, uh, and there are a group of different families that exist in our, uh, in our kingdom. So every game you start with three uh, clans. Each clan basically represents a family that is uh, pledging its loyalty to you. So you can see in this case we start with Clan Waldemar, uh, Clan Baldurk, and Clan Frieder. Now, the clan icons give you some different information about each one of these families. First off, if we hover over Clan Valmar, we can see they're currently unemployed, uh, they, uh, their discipline is none, and they add one family in 12 turns. Um, so they'll, they'll grow and add a new clan member in 12 turns. Um, if we go over to the right here, we can see this little, uh, I guess, alcohol icon here. Uh, says that they add two alcohol to the stockpile, two grapes to the stockpile, and two olives to the stockpile. I don't know if that's like a one-time thing, like when they first join your clan, or if that's a per month. I'm assuming it's a one-time thing, uh, and they lose one power. Uh, they also have a heart icon here, which says that they're passionate, so they take one less turn to train. Their experience gained is doubled. They're obsessed, uh, they're obsessed with every desire, and the likelihood of having desires is tripled. So they might uh, desire to change uh, professions, if you will. And uh, if you don't accommodate them, that can make them upset. Uh, but when you do accommodate them, they train and learn those new, new desires very quickly. Um, additionally, they might very rarely engage in feuds, so it's possible for your different clans to feud against each other and get upset, and then you have to make decisions on, like, do I want to punish them or not? It's kind of an interesting mechanic there. Um, and then, let's see here, they might uh, extremely rarely engage in brawls, so they can have crime or fight with other clans as well. Clan Baldrick is our second clan here. They're actually currently a level 2 livestock. That's their discipline. They're currently unemployed. Uh, they're nomadic. So they start with level 2 livestock plus 1 move point. They add 3 horses to our stockpile. And they're likely to get upset if you move them into a profession outside of livestock. Uh, they're also craven. So they'll refuse to attack enemy armies. Their morale is reduced by 3 quarters. But they get 1 more move point And they will never get involved in fights. And then we have Clan Frieder, uh, which this little green icon represents that they are of an agriculture profession, a level one. So this number two represents level two ag or level two uh, livestock. This green one represents level one agriculture, uh, and they are uh, a gatherer. So they start with a gatherer profession. They'll get upset if you move them outside agriculture, and they're demanding. So the likelihood of having desires is tripled. So they may tell you like, "I really want you to do something. If you don't do it, they will get angry." Uh, immediately, uh, and they're obsessed with every desire. They might rarely engage in a feud with another clan in the same tile. So those are our three different um, settler, settlers, I guess, or clan clansmen. Uh, clansmen, ooh, that sounds bad. Uh, those are our three different um, members of our uh, clan of the Goths. Um, we'll have them leave the, uh, the settlement. Now, uh, settlers here, or the, the members of your clan, can be represented either on the map or in your settlement. So you can have them enter your settlement, in which case they're kind of in this little thatched building here, uh, or you can have them exit the settlement, in which case they're uh, available outside of the clan. Um, so you can just kind of have them leave, and you can see them, they're on the map, they can move around to do, do different things. Um, 
In addition to that, uh, this is the basic map here, and there are different types of things that you can do on the map. You can uh, see here that there are forests here and grassland. You can see that there are uh, sort of rocks here rep which represent minerals. There are unidentified animal uh, groupings here. So the map is full of different kinds of resources all over here that you need to sort of mine and extract and exploit in order to build up your clan and get your clan larger. In addition to that, uh, you gain fame every turn that you exist, and as your fame goes up, more clans will want to join your your uh, sort of your kingdom. You have a maximum of twelve clans in your kingdom. You start with three, uh, but that twelve can go up with time. Um, on the right here is where these little tooltip pops up, top pop ups will occur, where you can find information about your different clans. One of the interesting things with this game's sort of architecture or the way that it's designed is it's very pop up centric. So if we go over Epicure, you can see you'll get a pop up that tells you about Epicure. But if you want to know what alcohol is, you can you see that there's another sort of a link here. If we hover over alcohol, it'll tell us what alcohol is, how you produce it, uh, what you can do with it, what the impacts are. Um, but then if there's something in here like professions that we want to understand, hover over that, hover over upgrades, hover over discipline. It very quickly turns into a Wikipedia type situation where I end up down a rabbit hole reading a whole bunch of information about the game that I had no idea about. And last thing I know, it's an hour later and it's time to go to bed. Uh, but still, that's an interesting little thing. Okay, so we've got these people joining our clans. Uh, the other information that is important is on the top right up here. You can see this is our religion, this little icon here. We're currently Aryan Christian. You can theoretically convert to Nicene or Pagan uh, religions, Nicene Christian or Pagan religions. I don't know what impact that has, though. Uh, it hasn't been made clear to me yet. You can also pack up your settlement and move it. So if we click on it, you can see there's the option to pack up your settlement, uh, and you can move the settlement elsewhere. So if we build like a logging camp, for example, it may exploit this resource, cut down all these trees. We may run out of resources in these mines. We may basically, you know, starve this area of resource just to consume all the resources and then need to move. And there's a very real likelihood, I'm hoping, anyway, because of that mechanic, is that maybe by the end game, you've got multiple barbarian tribes all kind of colliding with each other, all kind of pushing each other out of position, and maybe even pushing them into the Roman Empire. I haven't found the Roman Empire on the map yet, but I know it's supposed to be there, and I did get a gift from the Romans once. So I think that's an attempt to kind of model the migratory patterns of the different barbarian tribes in this era, and that could make for an interesting end game. Um, additionally, up here on the top right, Toto, that's our victory progress. We have the option to train a clan as a Roman legion, so basically join the Roman military, or become a military, or the Magister Militum, which is basically the military leader of Rome. So those are our victory progresses. On the top right here, this is the core of the game. Studying professions and training your clan. These seem to be, anyway, at least my initial impression, my first two hours of the game, seem to be very much the key things that you need to focus on to have success in this game. When it comes to studying professions here, uh, what that really means is, you know, what do you want to focus on? What's your research tree? So you can see here there's sort of six different big categories. Honor, which is like fighting and hunting. Agriculture, which is, you know, planting stuff. Livestock, which is sort of managing livestock. Metalworking, which is like crafting metal objects. Crafting, which is really focused on like wood, carving wood, building wood, uh, cutting wood, building uh, sort of lumber yards. Discovery, which is what it says, discovering the map. And um, if we click the show more option, you can see like there's these different tech trees. There's these different items that you need to research. So, for example, we have gatherers and reapers already researched with these check marks. If we want to research agriculture, we need to have both of them already researched. And we do. Additionally, you can do like a level two of each one of these as well. So you can see here there's a lot of different things to research. And to me, my experience, this is the core of the game. And it'll tell you how many turns you need to research uh, each item. Uh, when it comes to that, uh, in addition to researching that, once you've researched items, you want to train your clan. Like, what do you want your folks to do? So, Valdemar, for example, doesn't really have a, an active profession. They want to be in an active profession outside the settlement, um, but, you know, they, they, they don't want to be warriors. So, I presume that means, like, we want to train them as, like, log cutters or something. I don't know. So, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and click on them. Um, sorry. Uh, we'll train in a discipline. Uh, what do we want to train their discipline in? An active profession outside of the um, of the camp. So I think probably train them in crafting. And then what we'll do is we'll make them lumber people. So they're going to be cutting down trees. It seems like a good a good fit for them. 
Um, so that's what we're going to do. It's going to take one turn to train them in crafting. Um, and you can only train one clan at a time. So this first turn here, you can see we're training one clan in crafting. It's going to take one turn, represented by the one. This little uh, circular thing represents the number of turns. Uh, so we're training one clan in crafting. In addition, we probably do want to study crafting as well. So we're going to make our profession that we're studying crafting. Although maybe we've actually already done that. Yes, we have. So we're going to, yeah, we'll train in crafting. There you go. So we're training in crafting, and we're also training someone in crafting. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Clans are idle. So this person is an agriculture person. Um, I'm not sure. I don't see much on the map here that's ag-related. This could be an unidentified a wheat field over here. You can see uh, we have discovered this little peninsula down here, which shows us the different things on the map. But then there's these other icons in this uh, brown area, which represent rumors, essentially. People are saying there's whispers of a wheat field out here. So we'll go ahead and send this person out here. And all you do is click on the item, you right-click where you want them to go, and they start marching them. Again, it has a very civ feel. It's an interesting sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, picture book type of an art style. It looks very much like a kid's book with some, uh, you know, hand-painted uh, graphics or hand-painted, um, you know, uh, uh, visuals. And I really actually kind of like that. But anyway, that's the high level. That's the initial, I know we're like 15 minutes into this thing, but that's the first look at basic mechanics of the game. So now that we've selected that, let's go ahead and end our turn. So we'll go ahead and finish our first turn. You'll see here there's the loading screen on the bottom. And then it moves into late April of 400 AD. So every turn is half of a month. We started in early April of 400 AD. We're now into late April of 400 AD. The seasons will result in the map changing. Uh, when you go into the winter, you may very well say snow. Uh, it will get cold. And you'll be unable to do certain things on the map. Um, so actually, can they, can they go to this? This is a beehive, right? I don't know if this person can uncover the beehive, so we're actually going to send her back here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you can see here there was this one here rep which represented a new clan joining us after one turn. And so we have a new member of our clan. And that's a weird looking eye. <laughs> Talbot looks weird. Um, they are disfigured. They cannot be trained in social professions. Experience gained in all disciplines is double. Uh, they're disfigured, and they're afraid of animals. So you don't want them to work in livestock because they're not going to be happy in livestock. And they're also not in social professions. So you don't want them to be, I don't know. I don't know what a social profession is. Uh, but anyway, finally out of the trees and into the civilization. You must understand the forest is absolutely the most terrible place imaginable. Talbot. Okay. Um, so we have that new clan. You can see here we finished studying our crafting. Um, so now we're actually going to go ahead and study logging because I really want to start building wooden stuff. So we're going to research logging, uh, which will take three turns. But we do want to make sure we don't lose sight of these other things like agriculture and hunting and these other things on the map. So we're not going to spend all of our time researching logging. In fact, we're going to want to do some discovery research as well. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and focus on logging. Um, this uh, gatherer here is going to move uh, here. I guess you can't move there yet. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and train a clan. So we just trained these guys in sort of level one, if you will, uh, wood collector, I think it was, or was it a logger? What are these guys? I guess I'm training them in wood collecting. Wait, what are they now? Discipline crafting level one. Okay, so they're just generically a crafter. So now we got to give them an actual profession, which is going to be a wood collector. Or sorry, wood collector or logger? Wood collector. All right, so that's going to do that. Um, switch disciplines. We can switch disciplines for certain people. Um, I don't know if I really want to do that for these guys. These guys want to be in livestock. These guys don't have a profession. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and finish this, uh, the second turn up here and move into May of 480. Okay, so it's early May. We're going to move this collector down here. And yes, we can go ahead and we can forage. So we can click on this icon right here. This is a beehive. So uh, if we hover over it, do we get any information? Beehives can be harvested by a gatherer or an apiary to produce honey. Honey is food. So we're harvesting this person, our, uh, our 
agriculture person here. Uh, they are a level one agriculture. Their profession is gatherer, so they're gathering uh, beehive stuff. So hopefully that makes them happy. Um, you can see here, this is generating two turns worth of food per turn. So our stockpile of food will go up, which is good. Now, as the population of the clan continues to go up, however, we're up to level five now in terms of the size of our population, uh, we will need more and more food. So uh, while this currently gives us a plus two, once we get more people, it may not. Um, this person is a, what are they again? A crafting wood collector. Um, so they're a wood collector. We're actually going to send them down here. And can they do anything down here? I don't know what they do. What does a wood collector do? I would think you would like... Oh, well, I guess we, we've already moved them. So we'll have to see if they can do anything next turn. Meanwhile, another clan joined us. This guy looks like Gandalf or something. Clan Obricht uh, has joined the trees speak. They told us to come here. Good Lord, these people love their trees. They're fastidious, which means training time is doubled. Resource product production, however, is increased, uh, and construction uh, also increases. More move power and more move, more move points, more power. Uh, they're also a woodsman, so no extra points to move through the woods, but there's no real pressure to assign them to any particular job, so we can kind of train them to do what we want them to do. Um... So, this guy's livestock, whenever one of us looks into the cold black eyes of beasts, it is certain that they're only thinking of one thing. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, let's see here. Let's click on the clans. Oops. I guess I can't get these guys to leave. All right, um, what do we want these guys to do? I kind of want them to be an explorer. Like, I need someone to move around the map. So we're going to train him as an explorer. It is going to take four turns, though. So we'll do that. We'll finish this turn, and then we'll see if that uh, log gatherer down there can start cutting down force and uh, giving us some resources. Yes, they can. So we'll go ahead and hit forage. Forging is going to allow us to harvest the tile resources. The tile... Oh, shit. The tile that we were going to have them res or, or capture... Uh, we'll just finish one more turn because I didn't mean to move him but that's fine it's not the end of the world um, this is a relatively slow paced game so if we double click here we've got a wood collector and they're in a forest so they have 12 turns of wood in this forest after those 12 turns I believe the forest gets depleted uh, but in any event we're going to go ahead and have them forge here and they're going to start cutting down this wood and it's going to start generating 1.8 wood for us per turn so now you can see there's this new icon down here in timber uh, which is going up additionally there is a honey resource but i think it's all being converted to food right now i don't know if there's anything we need to do uh i think it's uh, converting honey into alcohol honey is automatically converted into food when your tribe has nothing else to eat so if we don't have other sources of food this honey turns into alcohol or into or this honey turns into food if we do have other sources of food then it turns into honey which can be used for other things Okay, so we have a new member that's joined our clan. Yet again, we're up to six tribes. Um, it is Clan Stygian. Please don't ask where we're from or why we're here. It is truly a depressing story. You wouldn't want to hear it anyway. Um, they are frail, so they lose movement points. Their max health is halved, and they never engage with feuds with other clans. And they are sullen, so their mood is never better than upset. Their experience gained in disciplines is halved. Their likely of having desires is halved, and they never engage in feuds. So it's good that they don't fight, but they're also not happy. So that's going to kind of weigh on our clans or our tribes. Something to be aware of, but not anything that's going to you know prevent us from doing anything. Um, Clan Valdemar's uh, wishes have not been met. What's their desire again? They want to switch to a settled profession. All right, so now that I just, you know, got you starting to cut wood, these guys are being a pain in the ass, and they want to be a settled position, so they want to be back home at the uh, at the base here. So we're going to need to train someone else, I guess, in uh, wood cutting here. What are these guys? These guys are, are crafting anyway. So let's make you a wood cutter. Well, we're already training someone else as an explorer, so we're going to have to wait on that. Um, but actually, they're already level 2 crafting but they don't have a profession yeah so we'll have to wait for them meanwhile we need to study a profession so we've done loggers we're going to go ahead and study wood bundlers which will allow us to build like logging camps and then we'll probably switch to something else 
Meanwhile, okay, so we already heard they're obsessed with switching to something else. We can now train loggers. Um, these guys have already moved. These guys are already harvesting that, so we're just going to move forward to the next turn. So again, this is in the early game, this thing moves pretty quick. As the game gets bigger, as you start you know, having more members of your tribe, then, uh, then it moves a little bit slower. Um, what I also will say is that you only ever have one settlement. I don't know if you actually like establish a kingdom, if you can build multiple cities. But it's not like Civ in that you're not building multiple cities all over. You're a migratory tribe. So you've got your settlement, your capital, if you will, and you roam the map, but that's about it. You're never really going to have like a massive number of, of cities, which is kind of an interesting concept for the game. There are other buildings and things like that that you can raise, but the fact that you're kind of limited to one capital or one city is kind of an interesting little twist. Uh, meanwhile, the caravan has arrived for the first time. So you can see here, this has just arrived. It's caravan. We have $100 to spend, so we can buy alcohol, we can buy honey, we can buy horses, parchment, weapons, tools, coal. Um, or we can sell our goods here. So for example, if we wanted to sell our uh, two alcohol, we could sell it for $5, five coins, uh, twice and have 10 coins and then have 110 coins. If we wanted to sell our horses, we could sell them as well. I don't want to do any of that. Um, and I don't really want, I don't have anything else to trade. And I don't really want to buy any of this either. So like, there's no, we can't buy parchment. They don't have any. Uh, I have no need to buy weapons at this time. Uh, we, we can build up arms and, and units later in the game, but currently we have no need for it. Um, and I don't really see a need to buy alcohol. We've got a little bit of alcohol. We've got a little bit of horses. Um, honey, you know, if we buy, we're already, we're already harvesting honey. So, okay. Um, parchment is, is kind of a, you know, whatever. We can't even buy parchment. We can sell it, but we can't buy it. Um, so there's no real reason for me to do any of this. Uh, and you can spend money to make uh, to upgrade the caravan to get more interesting stuff. So if we spend 10 treasure, future caravans will regularly have at least uh, 10 alcohol, 10 parchment, 5 cloth, five, 10 weapon, 10 tools, 10 timber. Um, so worth calling that out. They will often also have oil, wool, flax, iron, coal, stone, uh, and sometimes horse, sheep, cattle, and pigs. So just worth calling that out. You can basically spend money to convince the caravan to next time they come around, have more goods. And that's what we're going to do here. So we'll spend 10. Uh, you can see here we just spent 10 of our uh, treasure. And that's that's that. Um, clans are idle. So this guy's heading back to the settlement. We're going to go ahead and have him enter the settlement. And we're going to go ahead and look at our clans here. These guys want a settled profession, so we're going to have to change their profession to something settled. What the hell is a settled profession? Um, I guess a crafter would be a settled profession, but I, I, I don't know what to tell you because I don't have any, I, don't ha I haven't researched that yet. So we'll go ahead and produce five treasure because I don't have anything else I need to do this turn. And then our income should go up to 905. Meanwhile, you just see, you just saw that the uh, food income per turn dropped to 0.7, uh, and that is reflective of the fact that I don't really know that we've got a bigger clan, that the weather's changing, that it's now early June, July. I don't know what it is reflective of, but it's reflective of something. So our explorer has finished uh, training, so we're going to go ahead and send him out and hopefully start learning a little bit more about the map and the world around us. So you can see here, just open up a little bit more about the map. Uh, down here, we can see that there is a hunter. They're a neutral. They're not a member of any one clan that we just discovered in the south. And we're researching and, and kind of spreading our wings, if you will. Meanwhile, we need to train some clans. So let's go ahead and do some clan training. Uh, I don't think there's anything, I guess. I don't know if a digger is a settled. What the hell is a settled profession? I guess like a blacksmith maybe would be a settled profession or a weaponsmith or whatever. I don't, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you to do. I guess, uh, hmm. I mean, a potter and a woodcarver could also be settled, couldn't they? but I can't research it yet because I don't have the don't have the stuff. Okay, well, we need to raise uh, another logger. So this person is a um, level two, um, what is it, crafting person. So we're going to train them as a logger. 
Uh, and then we'll have uh, wood bundlers coming online uh, next turn. You see there, uh, Clan Hassel uh, has joined our tribe. Uh, and we can now train wood bundlers. So if we click Clan Hassel, they're boisterous, uh, which means that they may engage in fight. They're better at producing fame. And they have better range. They can, they can see further. So if we go into the clans... Uh, we're not studying a profession, but we are training some folks, so we'll leave some of these guys as is. He'd probably make a good discoverer if he's uh, if he's actually got better sight. Um, oops, not studying a profession. So let's go look at the professions, and then let's do... Is that fame? Uh, training requires timber. Resource production from the hunters, gatherers, and reapers is doubled. I don't know if that's like a fame icon. Cost 10 timber. Resource production is doubled. Okay. Um, I guess let's get a wood cover. Wood, wood, uh, wood carver. That would be a, a, a seated possession or whatever. Um... I don't know why this is, like, declining or whatever. There's some kind of bar over their head. I don't know if it's health or what. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and end that turn. And it takes a little while for this game to get going, guys. So it's, like, it's clearly not a rapid, like, you know everything you're doing right away. It clearly takes some time, some energy, some thought. And it's not going to immediately turn into, like, oh, this is, you know, I know everything that I need to do right away. So worth calling that out. Um, I do want to show you one more thing, though. We're getting kind of the end of this this video here, just because you know my intent really was just to kind of show uh, an initial impression of this game. And we're going to train him as an explorer, uh, but I did want to show you one thing here. Once these guys have their next turn, and that's building structures. So I haven't built any structures yet, but now that we've uh, built someone who has the capability to build a logging camp, you can see here Talbot. They're level three. Uh, they're a um, logger, which means you can build a logging camp. And logging camps are constructed by loggers on forest and harvest timber from that tile and all adjacent ones. A logging camp eventually depletes its tiles. So essentially this is like an industrialized uh, wood uh, production facility. So we're going to go ahead and build a logging camp. You can see here this little number two by his banner tells you it's going to take two turns to build it. And once it's built, it's going to pull wood from multiple hexes around here. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, end one more turn. We'll get our wood carvers uh, completed, and we'll also get our training completed. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we've uh, researched wood carving, uh, and now I think we're also going to go and research, probably should research discovery next. Um, what is that again? What does discovery do? Allow you to study new professions and upgrades in discovery. Once finished, it also provides a one-time opportunity to give a several clan to free levels in discovery, reducing the number of turns needed to train it in professions with that discipline. Okay. Uh, maybe these are settled professions down here. Traders, bards, lore keepers, guides. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and research that. Meanwhile, um, so is this a settled position? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Um, so we're training them in wood carving. And we are researching Discovery, and that'll all be done in a turn. We have some idle clans, so we've got one uh, Discoverer, if you will, one uh, Explorer. We're going to go east with him. We'll go north with these guys, see what we discover. It looks like we discovered water uh, and a school of fish. What, what is this? Large school of fish, vast school of fish. So we can presumably uh, build like fishing uh, things there. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and finish the turn. It'll be one and one, and then the logging camp should be done. It is, so you can see this individual disappeared inside the logging camp. It's producing three timber, and it degrades in 24 turns. It is pulling lumber from these three hexes, so the hex the camp's on, and the two adjacent hexes as well. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a new uh, member who just joined our team, uh, the Relindans, uh, they're reapers, so they want to be involved in agriculture, and they're intimidating, so other clans in the tile may commit crimes and never engage in feuds with other clans. 
Um, so they're level one agriculture. We will probably send them up here. Um, I'm assuming agriculture is good for collecting berries. I don't, or maybe this wheat field over here. We'll send them over there. Um, meanwhile, uh, the caravan has arrived. Uh, by the way, you between turns when the caravan isn't up here, you get like a number that tells you how many turns till the caravan will show up again. And when they do show up, you get a little star here. Um, in addition to that, we may choose a settled clan uh, to receive plus two levels of discovery. So I think we want it to be these guys. So they're going to be level two discovery. And I think we're already training them on something. Or we were. Um, and then the clan Valdemar is now happy because we granted the request to make them a settled clan. Okay. Uh, study profession. Uh, what do bards do? Bards increase your fame per turn. Um, they're a social profession. So social profession. Unidentified deposits. Construct paths. They need tools. Social profession and whatever that is okay so i don't really feel like researching them anymore at the moment i think what we want to do now is let's start researching some metal working because then i want to do some miners because we've got quite a few mineral resources around here that i want to exploit uh, we'll send these guys off to the east he's got a really good range and then it uh, looks like there's some kind of peninsula over here uh, additionally there we're not training any clans right now so these guys don't really care what they do so why don't we make them Got explorers, we've got woodcutters. I guess we could make them a digger. So let's make them a digger. And they're going to go for these uh, these deposits over here. Uh, and let's visit the caravan. We've got $95. We have three horses. So is there anything we want to buy? You can see the expanse of goods here at the caravan is greater. Uh, they've got tools, they've got weapons, they've got cloth, they've got parchment. But I don't really feel the need to buy any of this stuff yet. So we're just going to go ahead and pass. And uh, maybe we'll uh, upgrade the caravan a little bit more. So we've got a lot more goods showing up next time they come around. So we'll go ahead and finish that turn. Metalworking will finish here. And then what you're going to see up top here is you're going to see a number, 11, shows up up here. Which is the next time the caravan will pay be paying a tribute, or sorry, a visit to our kingdom. Meanwhile, it's October. You can see the map is starting to get a little bit darker, maybe a little bit muddier, representing the t change of season. This little icon over here, this little uh, yellow kind of gold almost looking thing is telling us that this hex is cold, which means the seasons are starting to turn and it may, you know, quickly turn to snow. That's something that can really harm your, your peasants, harm your ability to keep them happy. They can even freeze to death, I believe, if they run out of supply. Um, and a lot of times different like gathers or other things like that on the map kind of need to retreat back to the settlement uh, when the winter comes because they don't have sufficient shelter out in the open. Meanwhile, this little blue uh, icon here represents the actual scope of our kingdom. So this is currently the area we can call our own. We've got people out doing things outside of that, but this is our kingdom, if you will. It's generated one by the settlement and two, I believe the logging camp extends it a bit. With that being said, guys, it has been about 38 minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and save the game, and I'm going to go ahead and step out. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. You know, it's an interesting little game. I'm just kind of talking through some of the basics with the game. Uh, I haven't really developed an opinion on it yet. Uh, I think there's definitely some intriguing pieces. The, the art style is intriguing. It's pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive. It's a little bit of a slow roll to really get things going. Um, but overall, I think it's an intriguing little game here. Um, so with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Let me know if you like the video. Let me know if you'd like to see more. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.